Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another casual, another. Welcome to Casual Sundays. Today we're gonna have a discussion, or at least we'll try to because it's never quiet here at seven o'clock on a Sunday morning. Everybody's making noise. Sure, why not? So today we're gonna discuss about algae. And this is something that lately became a bit popular in my comment section because I'm doing semi hydroponics with some of my orchids currently. And of course, wherever you will have water and nutrients and light, you'll also have some algae. And if you know me, you know that I've said it quite a lot in the past. No matter how good a thing is, if it becomes excessive, there is a great chance it will become very, very bad. Algae included. So today we're going to talk about why I consider algae are bad or simply unnecessary, at least in my setup or other setups and what can happen if algae gets out of hand. So first, let's start with the idea that I see most commonly in my comment section. Have you ever considered that algae produce oxygen, aka they're actually useful? And while that is true under certain conditions and maybe some setups rely on algae, I feel it's a very narrow perspective. I feel like we need to think about everything that algae do because production of oxygen is only one little thing they do. And having oxygen production without the other things they do is pretty impossible. So let's start from this idea. Now algae are very similar to plants. They're obviously not identical, but they have a lot of things in common. Some of the things they have in common is photosynthesis and the green chlorophyll pigment and related to this production of oxygen as a result of photosynthesis, but also absorption of oxygen as a result of respiration. Algae need to breathe as well, and they do so by absorbing oxygen from the air. But fear not, because just like plants, the quantity of oxygen they consume is not greater than the quantity of oxygen they put out by consuming CO2. So what's the problem here? Well, everything revolves kind of around photosynthesis. So let's talk a little bit about this process. I know I've talked about it in the past, but let's just refresh our memory. Photosynthesis is the process from which light is converted into energy and it's dependent on certain things. First of all, light. Obviously, without light, photosynthesis is not possible. Second, nutrients. Yet again, without nutrients, we cannot form chlorophyll and we cannot regulate all of the other processes that make photosynthesis possible. And third, most important thing, water. Just like plants, algae absorb nutrients if they are already dissolved in water. So as you might expect, wherever we have light, water and nutrients, we will have algae as well. Now, the more light, nutrients and water we have, the more algae we'll have. And here is where the problems start, when algae gets excessive. Now, algae are much simpler organisms than plants, and they also have a much, much, much faster pattern of growth. The time it took for at least this side of the pot to get covered with algae is about three weeks. How much does an orchid grow in three weeks? Not a whole lot. So algae grow very fast and spread very fast but they also die off very fast and particularly when they get excessive. And this idea is actually correlated with algae blooms. Have you ever heard about this? If not, it refers to the phenomenon in which a body of water, a lake, the sea, whatever, gets overcrowded with algae. And one of the results of this phenomenon is lack of oxygen in the water and of course, fish mortality. So what happens when algae are excessive? Why do oxygen levels go down? Well, it has to do with the mortality of the algae. As they grow, and especially if they start to shade each other, algae will start to die off as well. And from here, decomposition processes start. Among other things, these processes consume oxygen. So whatever dissolved oxygen was in that body of water, it will be consumed by the decomposition of algae. The more algae decompose, the less oxygen we'll have in the water, and of course, the more terrible it will be. But of course, in our orchid pots, we don't have fish. In some of our orchid pots, we actually have water, like in my system of semi-hydroponics. But what we do have in that water is orchid roots. And orchid roots need to breathe, particularly the epiphytic ones, which require more oxygen than, let's say, terrestrial ones. However, though, the lack of oxygen is pretty much the least of our problems when it comes to orchids, because one of the major issues we will have is 
super acidifying the environment. With the composition, CO2 is released, and CO2 acidifies the area in which it is released, including water, because CO2 can dissolve into water as well. And a too acidic environment is detrimental for orchid roots. Pretty much it's the reason why we have to repot orchids every two years or so if we're growing them in organic medium. Decomposition of algae is just as bad as decomposition of medium. It has pretty much the same effects. It's pretty bad in an inorganic environment, such as uh, clay environments or even other materials, but in organic setups it's even worse, because it leads, through a chain reaction, to a faster decomposition of the medium itself. You have a colony of decomposing microorganisms with a full menu of organic substances to feed on. So returning back to the idea that algae are good because they uh, offer oxygen, Yes, that is true, but now that you know what excessive algae can do, let's talk about a little algae, and if we really, really need that oxygen, they can provide. Now let's start with other setups, let's say the organic setups, or maybe even inorganic setups that are not semi-hydroponics, they don't involve a reservoir of water. Well, in that instance, algae producing oxygen is a pretty much an overkill, because whatever air pockets you'll have in that medium will contain oxygen. You cannot have void in those pockets, air will find a way, and of course, air will contain oxygen. As the plants consume the oxygen in the air pockets, more oxygen will come from the outside, through the ventilation holes or drainage holes. It's a permanent circulation of air in your pot. How fast it happens? Well, that's a different discussion. But at all times, you will have oxygen in your pot if you have air pockets, if your medium is airy enough. If it's compacted, obviously oxygen is not present because it cannot take the place of the pockets being filled with the material. And that's where suffocation comes in. The lack of oxygen will lead to suffocation for roots. And algae, sadly, cannot fix this, because they will only form on the edge of the pot, and only if the pot is transparent or is translucent, because, as we know, algae need light. So they will never form deep inside the pot, in the core of the pot, in the core of the root ball, they will only form at the outside, at the edge of the pot. So algae that will oxygenate an organic medium with bark or sphagnum moss, they're really not so needed, because they really don't do a good job at it. And particularly, they do not oxygenate what we need to aerate more, meaning the core, the root ball. What they can do, though, is multiply excessively and then start to decompose and affect the medium as well. So in this type of setup that does not imply a body of water, I personally believe they're an overkill, they're absolutely not needed. You do have oxygen in your pot if you make sure the medium is not compacted or is not mushy due to decomposition. But now let us return to hydroponic systems, and we'll take my setup, the semi-hydroponic system. In a semi-hydroponic system, algae, in my opinion, are yet again very, very useless. And I'll tell you why. Because of the LECA, first and foremost, as it retains such great air pockets that the oxygen produced by the algae is simply not needed. I have such a big amount of oxygen in the air pockets that really I don't need the oxygen produced by the algae. Also, roots produce some oxygen as well. But I rely mostly on the aeration of the entire pot. Now, how about the water reservoir? Well, surprise, surprise, algae don't like the water reservoir, and I have an empty pot that will better illustrate this. So, what can we see in this pot? Well, we can see that algae did form, but do you see where they actually formed? Mainly in this section. Now, what is this section? It's exactly the limit between my water reservoir and the airy part up above. Why do they actually form there? Easy, because there is a lot more oxygen here than here. Now hold up, our orchids need oxygen as well. This is a sign that the reservoir is not oxygenated. No, not really. Remember I told you algae grow faster than plants? Well, they need more oxygen because of this, and they will prefer areas that have the perfect balance of moisture and air according to their pattern of growth. Orchids do not grow as fast, so they don't require as much oxygen as algae. Therefore, orchid roots are perfectly fine in the reservoir, while algae, it's not that they're dying, but they prefer this side. Now, because this is a very oxygenated area, as it is, due to the ventilation holes and the airiness of LECA, why do I need the oxygen produced by the algae in this area? I already have oxygen. If I would potentially want the oxygen from the algae, I would want it here. What do you know? Algae don't like that area. 
Furthermore, this is not a stale environment. It's not like we permanently have a body of water here. In a few days, the reservoir will become empty. It doesn't mean that the whole system will be bone dry, but at least we will not have excessive water or a body of water here. And then we're gonna top off the system and fill the reservoir once again. The Leka, due to its porous texture, actually retains and traps bubbles of air, which will eventually dissolve in the water. And this oxygen will eventually be absorbed by the orchid roots. And in a few days, the whole process will happen once again. Why would algae form here when there is not necessarily enough oxygen for them and also they will have to compete for oxygen with the orchid roots when they can grow here where there is no competition but then again I don't really need algae in this area of my pot I already have oxygen here so as you can see algae are just slightly opportunistic if I can call them like that they will not form in conditions that are not favorable to them as it just so happens these conditions are where we want them to form and of course the same things will apply when these algae form too much or in excess they will start to die off and what will happen well they will acidify everything they will fill it with byproducts of decomposition they might actually get trapped in between these air pockets not being able to come out and they will inevitably affect the roots of my orchids so yet again do i really need the hassle and do i really need the benefits of algae in my system i personally consider that i don't so for this reason i don't really want to have excessive algae in my pots Therefore, I'm using not super opaque pots, but not transparent pots either. Algae will form, yes, as long as there is a little bit of light, there is a chance the algae will form, but their growth will be very limited in comparison to a transparent pot. Now, you don't have to freak out if you have a little bit of algae forming. That's okay, it takes quite a lot of algae to start creating problems. But the more you create favorable places for algae to develop, the more you're prone to having problems in the future. Now, this is for the vast majority of setups. There might be other orchid setups where algae are beneficial. And here I can only think of water culture. But even in that type of setup, you will eventually have to change the water because algae will eventually die. So the process will be resetted at some point and the quantity of time you will spend without algae, I'm not sure how long it is, but in that setup, I guess algae might have a purpose or a sense, but being that I don't have experience with that setup, I'm not entirely sure how fast the algae can work. So that was the video for today. I hope you've enjoyed this discussion. And if you're up for more discussions, just give me ideas down below. And next Sunday, maybe we can talk about a subject that you guys requested. Don't forget to check the description down below for additional information, links, articles, and stuff of the sorts, you know the drill. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchids and plants videos. And also don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye. So there's this seller on eBay. I never ordered from him before, but I did just for the sake of trying it out. I did order something recently. I'm sorry, Anna. I just had to try it. Uh, what's funny with this seller, I'm not sure he knows exactly what those orchids are. Some of them are very popular and very known and I know them by the looks, I know their names. But if you look at his listings, all of them have these really cutesy names embellished with all sorts of uh, variety names that absolutely do not exist. For example, uh, I purchased what I purchased, it was titled as Neo Phoenicia Hybrid and then something to do with rainbows. Luckily I know what I purchased, I got an Asco Finetia Peaches. Now I'm gonna wait for this orchid to bloom to see if it is what it's supposed to be and then uh, you know we're gonna talk more but I just I just find it so funny all of his listings have these embellishments in the names that absolutely do not exist and they all have to do with dreams rainbow fantasy but it's absolutely funny to read Vanda tricolor hybrid dream peach dream orange delight oh delight yet again is the thing uh, the Cygnotus wine delight I just remembered he names it as red wine and I guess if you search for it now you'll find the listings uh, but anyway I really hope the orchids are nice the ratings are good I hope they are what they're supposed to be one way to find out purchase and I did so we'll see what happens